when you plant a seed in the kingdom system it's going to provoke the favor over the seed in the world system and the seed in the world system is us understanding how to invest properly God is in the business of making our lives to be abundant, to be, to be prosperous, to live in abundance, not to live in lack, not to live in poverty. The Lord is opening my eyes and he shows me a young girl. The name I heard is Noctula. Where is Noctula? She's in Pretoria. She's in Pretoria. You are not supposed to gather because there is a funeral. Somebody is gone. We need to cancel this by the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout fire. Fire. From Nogutula down, I pray no power of the enemy shall be able to prevail. Son of Zabu. All good to Zabu. Son of Zabu. Son of Zabu. Son of Zabu. What? A two. Boyes, 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 boyes. My mother, your life to Jesus. This is the time. Give your life to God. My father, your life to Jesus. Glory to God. This is your friend Bishop Alex once again. On our new series, I'm dealing with the subject dominion in finances or financial dominion. I want you to join me on this series because financial understanding is very important. A lot of times pastors have asked people in the church and elsewhere to give. But a lot of people fail to give, not because they don't love God. They fail to give because they have nothing to give. So we have taken a new shift. We are not asking you to give. We are teaching people how they can save money and how they can generate wealth. So in my series, Financial Dominion, I'm equipping the saints of God to become kingdom millionaires. If you have been having debts, financial mess-ups, and you are in a situation financially, join me in this series as I'll be praying for a financial blessing over you and giving you wisdom for financial dominion. Join me in our service and get blessed. Shalom. We are continuing with our uh, financial dominion. It is our right. It is our birthright. We deserve it because why? Jesus gave it to us. So as children of God, we really need to understand the issues of finances, our mentality, the way we look at money, the way we look at wealthy. We need to change our mentality. Don't be in the group of people who criticize wealthy, who criticize riches, because if you want riches, do not criticize that which you want, because why? You can never attract that which you criticize, but there is most of us who criticize criticize riches. We criticize good things and we don't attract them. But inside of our hearts, we wish also we could have those things. But you'll be busy criticizing. My friend, you can never attract that which you criticize. Say to your neighbor, you cannot attract that which you criticize. Hallelujah. So if you want it, start to talk about it. Reinforce it. Promote it. 
confess it, and start to lead by the principles of God. Hallelujah. I've entitled my sermon uh, 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 under the subject of uh, financial dominion, but I just want to talk about the benefits of giving your tithes and your offerings because it starts there. You can never have financial dominion you don't even have a right to pray for prosperity, to pray for financial breakthrough if you have not yet understood the principle of tithing and giving because it starts there. Amen. So if you are still battling and still not understanding, still fighting with God over your tithe, you, you, you can't. This financial dominion is not for you. Just remove yourself from the list. It's not for you. We can't even begin to talk about it with you. Amen. So I just want us to just to talk a little bit uh, 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 more about that. Malachi 3 and verse uh, 8 to 10. Yes, my Bible reads that. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? That's now God asking. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say... Wherein have we robbed thee? Now people are asking, because God is saying, you have robbed me. And people are acting all innocent and asking God to say, ah, ah, where have we robbed you, God? How can we rob you? And God says, yes, you have robbed me. Where? In your tithes and in your offering. Come on, move with me. In your tithes and in your offerings. You are cursed. Hey, who wants to be cursed? No one wants to be cursed. But you know if God says that you are cursed, you must take it serious. Because God is always talking about blessings. God is always talking about love. He's talking about grace. He's talking about favor. He's talking about promotion. God curses is not part of God. But when God says that you are cursed, you must take it serious. And he says you are cursed with what? With a curse. The, 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 the tricky part of this uh, part of scripture, it does not stipulate what kind of a curse, but it just says a curse. So a curse can be anything, anything that is bad, anything that is, is negative, anything that is horrible, it can be on you. At least if it's stipulated, you would be able to say, okay, this one, if I see it, then that's the curse that Lord, the Lord is saying. But here it says, you are cursed with what? With a curse, for you have robbed me. Even the whole, this whole nation, you have robbed me. The whole nation, you have robbed me. Come on, let's go to verse, uh, verse 10. You have robbed me. Then he says, no, you see, when, when, when God brings something, he always, uh, 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 when he brings a challenge to you or he brings a problem to you, he does not leave you with a problem to sit with it, but he always brings what? He brings a, 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 a solution to your problem. He always says there is something that you can do about this because why? God is in the business of restoring lives. God is in the business of delivering people. He does want to see people bound forever. He is in the business of restoring people. So he says to say, bring you all, all. Somebody shout all. All. Oh. Oh. Did you say half? Did you say quarter? Did you say a pinch of it? No. He says, bring you all the tithes. Where? Where? Talk to me. Where? Bring all your tithes, your whole, your all tithes. Where? Into the storehouse, right? And the storehouse he is talking about, it is his house. He says that they may be meat in my house. And what is the house of the Lord? This is the house of the Lord. So that there may be meat in my house. And prove to me. Other versions say that and test me. Now, when God says, you prove me, you test me in this, he is putting all his integrity online. He is putting himself at risk because he has given you the right to say, you test me in this. You prove me now, herewith, says the Lord of hosts. And if I will not, because when he says test me, it means that God has put his head on the block. 
He is sure and he is confident of what he is saying. He means every bit of it. He is not going to change it at any moment. So he says, test me and see if I will not what? If I will not open the windows of heaven. And pour, even when it's raining, when we say it is pouring, you must know that it is really raining heavily. So God says that I will pour out blessing that there shall be not be room enough to receive it. Who doesn't want abundance? We are talking about exceedingly abundant. That there shall be no room enough for you to do what? To be able to receive the, the, the blessing that the Lord is going to pour on you. Because why? God is in the business of making our lives to be abundant, to be, to be prosperous, to live in abundance, not to live in lack, not to live in poverty. God wants us to live in prosperity. Hallelujah. So he says, test me in this. And when God says, test me in this, he is assuring you that beyond reasonable doubt, you may be doubting yourself to say, if I do this, is it going to happen? But God says, test me and see if I will not do it. And I say that the word of the Lord does not return to him empty. It surely accomplishes its purpose. God does not promise and without fulfilling. Whenever God promises, he makes sure that he fulfills his promise. Hallelujah. He fulfills his promises. So God wants us to do what? To move in greater abundance. God wants us to move in prosperity. But for us to be able to partake of this prosperity, for us to be able to have our barns and our storehouses to be filled with the blessing and the abundance of God, it does not just come by prayer alone. Amen. It does not just come by prayer. There are principles that God has put in. Number one principle that God has put in, he says, bring your tithe, your whole tithe, not part of it, not sometimes, but whenever you have your income. What is a tithe? A tithe is a 10% of your income. Every income that you receive, the 10% belongs to God. It is a sign of honor to God. It is a sign of appreciating God. Because why? When we read Deuteronomy 8.18, the Bible says that it is the, remember you the Lord, for it is he that gives you power to do what? To make wealthy. So God gives you power. So when you give what belongs to him, you are appreciating God. You are honoring him for giving you power every morning to go to work. Every morning to run your business, the business ideas that God has given you, you are saying, God, thank you. So I'm giving this back to you. Then when we go to John 3 verse 1 and verse, uh, verse, verse 2, chapter 1 and verse 2, it says that, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way. That uh, you may prosper in every way and it may be well with you as I know your soul keeps well and prospers and prospers. The, he says, beloved, I, I pray that it may be well. Now, this is Paul saying that I want you, I pray that it may be well with you and that you may prosper. That is the will of God that everything that concerns us, it must must be well with us. It must be well with our souls. It must be well with our children. It must be well with our businesses. It must be well with our careers. It must be well with our marriages. It must be well with us. Hallelujah. And it says, I'm praying that it may be well with you and that you may prosper. If we want to move in financial dominion, it doesn't just come. It is conditional. It is a conditional blessing. The offering that you are giving, is it a befitting offering? Is it according to your income? Is it according to your status? Won't it shock you to find that a, a, a medical doctor will give the same offering as a pensioner? That is robbing God. Because if I'm a, 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 an educator, I cannot give the same offering with somebody who is a, 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 a pensioner then I'm robbing God. That's how we rob God. So when we give our offerings, we give our offerings according to our standards that the Lord has put in our lives. If you are a nurse, give a, 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 an offering that is befitting of a nurse. Hallelujah. If you are a director, give an offering of a director. 
Am I talking to somebody? If you are a CEO of a company, give a, an offering of what? Of a CEO. Now they say that it's offering time. And I've got all this money in my wallet. I'm talking about giving according to the way God has blessed us. Now, our minds have limited us to say, when we are giving an offering, it has to be like maybe one note. Even if you have got 2,000 rand in the purse, you will only take true or false. Am I saying the truth? That's how we give. Because our mentality has told us to say, just pick one. But let me tell you something. Giving an offering, giving a befitting offering to God, it does not mean you must just be limited with that one not and put it on the altar. You can take a thousand rand the way it is like this and put it in the offering basket. I'm trying to help you, Holy Ghost Firehouse, that don't be limited to just one in your purse, even if there is a lot there. You just take one. You can take three. You can take two. You can take four. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt God. So we need to change our mentality where Giving is concerned and start to give according our offerings. They must really, really, really be befitting. There must be a difference in there because God blesses us according to our faithfulness. It's not in much. It's in the faithfulness. When you are faithful with what God has given you, even if it's a thousand rand and you take a hundred rand offering and the other one who is uh, earning maybe uh, 20,000, and they give a, 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 an offering of how much? Of 2,000. And that one who is earning 1,000. And they give their offering of 100 rand. Let me tell you something. The one that has given 2,000 rand has not given more than the one that has given 100 rand. Because why? All of you, you are faithful to what God has given you. So God will bless you the same. Will bless the faithfulness. So it's not in much. Amen. It is in what? It is in being faithful unto the Lord. Our God, he is a God of increase. He is a God of multiplication. And so if we stand here and we sing a song to say, God's, uh, Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. If we are to partake in the blessings of Abraham, we have to observe what did Abraham do for him to activate God's blessing? What did Abraham do for him to activate the multiplication and the increase in his life? You can not claim Abraham's blessing if you are not observing the principles of God. You cannot claim increase if you are not obeying what Abraham, your father, did. It is until we start to observe the principles of God. It is until we start to obey God's commandments. That's when we will see God's blessing. And Abraham was obedient to God's commandment. I say he was obedient to God's commandment. That's why when you read further in the Bible, you will see that God started to bless Abraham. And he was the first one even to give the tithe. He observed the law of tithing and offering. When he gave his offering to Melchizedek, the prince of peace, he observed it. And out of it, we see God enlarging Abraham. We see God blessing his, uh, uh, his, his, his livestock. We see see God increasing him. We see God expanding his estate and it did not only end with Abraham because he says I will bless you even for the generations to come. We see Isaac is born and Isaac starts to move in greater blessings. Isaac went to a further step. He went even higher than his father. Even when the enemies tried to frustrate him, three times they frustrated him, four times they frustrated him. Whenever he died the wells, the enemies came and buried those wells. But let me tell you something if you are moving with the blessing of God, there is no Amalekite, there is no Jebusite that can come and bury your wells. Wherever God blesses you, you will prosper there. It doesn't matter where Isaac went, it doesn't matter where Abraham went. The Bible says that the Lord blessed him. It is whose you are. 
It is who you carry that matters. It is who is backing you that matters. It is who is on your side who matters. So God says, go. And we see my father Abraham started expanding. He started to grow. He started to grow. I want to tell somebody, maybe you are discouraged of the place where you are. You don't have to change your location. You don't have to change a city. You don't have to change a town. All you need is the Abrahamic blessing. All you need to do is to have the dominion, the financial favor upon your life. All you need to have is to, 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 to start activating the principles of God. And God is going to bless you. I want us to look a little bit at the, 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 the promises and the favor that God brings upon us when we honor him with our tithe. If you fully obey the Lord, your God and carefully follow all his commands I will give you today he says not tomorrow he didn't say next week he didn't say next year he says I will give you today the Lord your God I will set you on high above all nations on earth he says if you start to observe and to obey my commandments I the Lord today I'm going to set you above you are going to be above you are not going to be the tail but you will be the head Wherever you go, you will be leading. It doesn't matter who is there, but it's like the Lord put your life on a pedestal. He puts your life on a mountain where everybody is going to see you, where everybody shall admire the glory of God over their lives. And he says, all these blessings shall come upon you. All these blessings, come on. All these blessings, I don't know what kind of a blessing you are looking for, but I'm looking for real blessings. I say I'm looking for a blessing. He says, and all these blessings shall come upon you. Not only shall they come upon you, but they shall accompany you. They shall accompany you. Wherever I'm going, the blessing is accompanying me. Blessing, I want you to follow me. I want you to follow me. There's blessings that will be following you wherever you go. You can be in the lowest economical place. The blessing will be following you. The witches can come. The blessing of the Lord will be accompanying you. You are not alone, but you are being accompanied by the blessing of the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are saying, Bishop, I'm blessed, but I need a correction in my finances. Listen to me. If you have been having financial challenges, I pray to the Lord that is going to visit your home, visit your career, visit your business, and touch the labors of your hands, that everything that was not working will start to work in the name of Jesus. But remember, it's Jesus who makes things to happen. If you don't know Jesus, you have never received him as your Lord and Savior, open your heart right now. Close your eyes and pray with me. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive my sins. Today I choose to save you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, congratulations. If you're having further, you need further assistance from us, call the numbers appearing on the screen. I'll be waiting to revert to you. Until next time, shalom. Bye. To all our viewers at home, thank you for tuning in. If you'd like a copy of the sermon or you'd like to fellowship with us, please find us at number 12 Samora Marshall Street in the city of Mbombela. For more information, please use the numbers on the screen and please tune in again next week.